In this video, we are forecasting a hyperactive week of severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center has issued an enhanced risk of severe weather for tomorrow with a 10% probability of significant tornadoes. Beyond this, the storms keep rolling all the way through the beginning of May as several disturbances will bring forth all kinds of problems. All that and more coming right up. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Things are really ramping up out there in the weather world. We got a lot of severe weather on the way, so I'm not going to waste your time here, and we're going to start talking talking about it right now. All right, starting off looking at the lower 48, and we're gonna look at that future radar time and date in Eastern time. It's always gonna be up there above my head. Starting off today around 2 p.m., you can see we got a uh, slight risk of severe weather actually over here in Nebraska, and a big marginal risk from Texas all the way back up into Idaho. Uh, not a lot expected here, some hail, maybe some winds, but we're gonna go ahead and push this radar forward anyways. You can see some storms are gonna convect there this evening. It'll be hit or miss. Some of the heavier rain and uh, louder thunder claps are going to be happening over here in eastern Kansas all the way up into the tri-state area between South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. You can see we still got some snow up here in northern Maine just like I was talking about yesterday. A couple people will end up with some significant snow by the time that's all said and done. You can see that some of that warm air is advecting up from the Gulf of Mexico into the central U.S. Uh, combining with some of the cold air up top here and sparking off some storms along a warm frontal boundary or kind of like a stationary boundary and that's going to continue to cause problems from Nebraska all the way down into Kentucky. Now, if you look closely, you can see the swirling motion of our next storm system over here that is going to spark some big time problems as we go into the day uh, tomorrow. Can you see those problems? Yeah, you can kind of see a little bit there uh, with some of those big supercells potentially popping up around Topeka tomorrow. And we're going to go much more in depth on that right now. Okay, so the Storm Prediction Center has expanded their severe weather risk tomorrow. The enhanced risk goes from Oklahoma City all the way up into southern portions of Nebraska. That includes Wichita and then that slight risk has also gotten bigger. A lot of Nebraska all the way over into Iowa, portions of Missouri, way down all the way into the extreme northern part of Texas to the east of Wichita Falls there. You guys are all under a severe weather risk tomorrow, and this definitely looks like it's going to be uh, an interesting day. Once again, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Wichita, Topeka, Junction City, Beatrice, uh, all these places in the orange, you need to be hyper weather aware tomorrow because this is not only an enhanced risk for wind and hail, this is also a 10% hatched risk for for tornadoes. Everybody in the yellow there, uh, you not only have a 10% probability of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of a given point, uh, but we do expect that some of those tornadoes are going to be significant, meaning EF2 strength or higher. You see, the driving force behind tomorrow's storms is actually going to be this very well-defined dry line uh, where we've got a huge area of cool, dry air pushing up against some warm air. Uh, if there's enough lift that happens here on the mesoscale level, uh, at any point, uh, some big supercells could convect. This is the perfect environment for isolated discrete supercells to kind of pop up and then work their way into an area where that lower level jet and our nadir juice is really starting to ramp up uh, and, and kind of utilize all of those uh, ingredients for themselves and then go on to cause maybe big tornadoes. But it all just depends on whether or not those storms convect and at what time they convect. Uh, obviously, uh, if this happens between 4, 5, and 6 p.m., things are going to be worse because there's going to be more instability out there for the storms to work with. Um, however, if the storms wait until the cold front moves in, maybe around 10 or 11 p.m. You see how the cold front moves in and starts to really move the dry air out of the way and it starts to move the warm air off to the east. Uh, if, if the storms wait until then to convect, we'll more than likely see more of a linear mode of storms. The tornado threat will be slightly lower, but still there. Uh, and we'll mainly be talking about some straight line damaging winds. Now, remember a 10% probability of seeing a tornado means a 90% probability of not seeing a tornado. You're gonna be fine. Don't be scared, be prepared. Just make sure you have a way of getting warm warnings just in case uh, one of those big storms does come for your neighborhood. Uh, you can see that our lower level jet really starts to crank up here around 50 to 60 knots, uh, but it doesn't happen until 10 p.m. So that's that could be another saving grace. If we do get supercells, maybe they will just be pretty to look at uh, with some big hail and uh, not necessarily big time rotators as they go off towards uh, Topeka and Kansas City. That lower level jet does increase as we go later into the night. It gets really intense there <laughs> uh, by the time we get into the early morning period. So even if we don't get those isolated discrete supercells. I think the embedded uh, QLCS tornado problem is going to continue to be a problem uh, if that line stays uh, ample. That's something that we won't know until we get closer to the event, guys. So uh, make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Stay tuned to the National Weather Service. Uh, I'll have another update for you tomorrow right before we start the live coverage. But um, yeah, this is just going to be one of those now casting things, I believe. Currently, if we look at the simulated radar, the HRRR, 
Vanguard, the 6Z model, does try to convect a little storm here south and west of Topeka along the dry line, but it really quickly enters an area of increased cap, uh, and then it really starts to convect those storms along the cold front, which this will still have a tornado potential. So keep this in mind. There's still a tornado chance here if these things form along the cold front. In fact, the tornado chance is it's just as good in my opinion. Uh, but those uh, photogenic supercells, the storm chasers dream uh, would be for them to form across the dry line here so that they would be visible during the day uh, right before sunset. Uh, of course, if we get those nighttime naders in the dark, uh, that you know, nobody wants that. So hopefully that's not what we're dealing with. Uh, and instead, uh, we see no tornadoes. But if we do, they only affect cornfields. They're in perfect position for Vince Welty to get a nice picture and move on. Once again, don't be scared. Be prepared. It's going to be all right, guys. Make sure you have a NOAA weather radio on deck. You can get those at your local Target, Walmart. I think a lot of places have them. Uh, obviously, you can get them from shopryanhall.com, but you won't get them before tomorrow, okay? If you live somewhere else and you want one within the next uh, two or three days up to a week, go to Shop Ryan Hall and get them. And then once again, Shop Ryan Hall is the sponsor of today's video. Shopryanhall.com. It's the best merch store for weather nerds. See that? You want that phone case, okay? You can get it for the iPhone. You can get it for the uh, iPhone X Max, Android, Samsung. It don't matter. You can get it. Go get it. And, of course, the most important thing, I think, is that we sell NOAA weather radios directly from Midland. These are the best ones in the world. Uh, they've got solar panels on them. You can crank them. You can put batteries in them. They won't lose power. You can sleep soundly knowing that you're going to get woken up if a severe weather warning gets issued for your area. Lots of cool stuff going on with this one, guys. A portion of Every purchase you make from this website will go directly towards the Y'all Squad's initiative to help people when disaster strikes. That includes tornado victims, hurricane victims, flood victims, it doesn't matter. And it also includes our storm chasers, okay? If we don't have our storm chasers out there on the ground, we can't help anybody immediately after uh, storms happen. So that's part of what buying the merch is for. The other part is just that it's cool, okay? You know you want it. Go get it. All right, moving on to Saturday. Uh, we have a slight risk of severe weather for portions of Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Missouri, and Arkansas. This does include St. Louis, Evansville, all the way up to Springfield, Bloomington, and almost to Chicago, but not quite. Uh, this is a continuation of the threat from Friday, but also new storms will convect over here uh, on Saturday. Taking a look at those 850 millibar winds, you can see how the nocturnal tornado threat is going to be a problem there on Saturday early in the morning as those Friday night storms move into Missouri. But things are really going to let up a little bit as this whole system injects off to the north and east. Uh, however, as we approach 5, 6 p.m. tomorrow, uh, new storms will start to convect over here. And the tornado threat, I think, is going to be lower. But still, the severe weather threat is absolutely there. Check out the instantaneous flash rate. You're going to get a big round of storms early in the morning on Saturday. Those are going to fizzle out. And then if it's able, if there's enough instability, if there's enough daytime heating by around 5, 6, 7 p.m., new storms are going to pop up here in Illinois all the way down into uh, Arkansas and Kentucky. And these could have the potential to drop big hail damaging winds and isolated tornadoes uh, but once again it's just another one of those things where we don't really know exactly what the threats are going to be until we get closer to the event it is just a slight risk of severe weather but there is a chance that, that gets upgraded to an enhanced uh, so don't pay too much attention to those outlooks just know that some nasty weather is on the way over here and the time to prepare is now and look at this guys it, it doesn't stop it doesn't stop anytime soon. It's going to be a constant barrage of storms and rain and just nastiness uh, for a lot of the eastern and southeastern portion of the U.S. for the next little bit. All right, so not only do we have that slight risk for Saturday, but look at Sunday and then look at Monday, and I would just about bet on Tuesday we're going to see something very similar down here. The beginning of May, the next 10 days or so literally look like uh, a storm chaser's paradise. I picked the wrong time <laughs> to go out there to chase. Now, I, I, I'm happy with what I did. I'm happy with the footage that we got, but man, it's going to be a storm frenzy out there on the plains as we go forward. Watch the Cape. This is convective available potential energy. Watch how it builds up there in the south, sneaks around the back of that low pressure system, and now it's really going to start piling up and then interacting with these short waves as they come through. Look at this. Non-stop energy over there in Texas, Oklahoma, all the way up into Kansas. Uh, this is literally going to spark uh, some of the, probably some of the best storm chasing we've seen in a decade uh, out here in the plains. If this actually comes to fruition, if we're going to have five, 6,000 Cape days over here in Oklahoma and Texas along a dry line with a short 
short wave trough coming through. Uh, you can bet your bottom dollar we're going to see a lot of storms over here and we're going to see a lot of storm chasers out. Not only do we have the cape, we have the moisture, son. Look at all that moisture building up there. And you can see uh, those little waves, those little kinks uh, in the moisture that travel east. Those are going to bring the storms even further east. So obviously, we're talking about good storm chasing weather over here in the plains, uh, but we're just going to see a lot of rain and storms and just general bad weather from the Midwest all the way over into the Tennessee and Ohio valleys. Uh, if you're along this boundary right here, just get ready for storms. They're coming and they're coming in a train and I don't know what's going to stop the train. Lots of precipitable water out there too. This is this is going to bring a lot of rain to a lot of people. Now, some of us need it, but some of us don't. Uh, but get ready for all of the storms all the way through Saturday, May 7th. Here's a good way to visualize who's going to see the most rain and who's going to see what. Everywhere in the red and the oranges and the yellows here, get ready for a lot of rain over the next uh, week or, or, or week and a half or so. Uh, and some of that will come in the form of severe weather with hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. It's May, guys. Every time you get a severe weather event, <laughs> you got to worry about tornadoes in May. Uh, so make sure everybody's weather aware that the severe weather threat is starting to move into more of the traditional areas. But also, if you're further east, if you're east of Missouri and Illinois and Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky, Tennessee, those areas, for example, you also need to be preparing for the intermittent problems with severe weather as we go forward. A huge shout out to our members over here. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. We're almost at 2,500 members. That's insane. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, because I will be posting updates about our plans for the live stream tomorrow. If you're interested in that, that's the best place to get a hold of me, especially Twitter. And of course, visit shopryanhall.com. We got all kinds of cool new stuff coming out there uh, over the next couple of days, so stay tuned to that, all right? Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.